Welcome back to another video and today we're going to run through prototype pollution and walk through a lab and that's all there is to it. So if you enjoyed the video then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. Keeper is a vendor that we've used for password and secrets management at TCM for quite some time. What's awesome is that they also do privileged access management and it's way more affordable than some of the big name vendors which if you know us you know that we're all about affordable. Affordability. It was an easy yes for us when the partnership conversation happened and unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless and has no implementation fees. Plus, Keeper is FedRAMP authorized. So if you're looking for a new solution to protect your organization, check out keeper.io forward slash TCM and schedule a quick demo with that awesome team. Prototype pollution is a vulnerability that occurs in JavaScript when we manipulate the prototype of an object. And this allows us to inject or modify properties that are shared across all objects of that type, potentially affecting the entire application. And it can lead to access to sensitive data, execution of arbitrary code, denial of service, bypassing security controls, and altering application behavior. Prototype pollution can occur both on the client side and server side in inside JavaScript environments. And of course, the impact of the attack is going to depend on where the prototype pollution takes place. Typically on the client, we're hunting for cross-site scripting and server side, we're looking to impact the application behavior and bypass security controls like access controls or simply execute code. Now, before we jump into a lab, we should briefly discuss the prototype chain as this is a fundamental aspect of prototype pollution. So in JavaScript, objects inherit properties and methods from their prototype. And the prototype chain is a series of links between objects and their prototypes. So when accessing a property, JavaScript looks up the chain until it finds the property or reaches the end. And it's worth noting that object.prototype is the top of the chain. So polluting object.prototype affects all objects in the application that inherit from it. So by manipulating the prototype chain, we can inject malicious properties that propagate to all objects. Let's take a closer look at a practical example. All right, so here we are at my VM and I'm just gonna pull up Burp Suite and we're going to load up the lab and hopefully we'll be able to find server-side prototype pollution. So if I come into here and come into proxy, let's open up the browser and I'm just gonna paste in the targets. And you can see here we have privilege escalation via server side prototype pollution. And let's just quickly step through the app and see what's available because that's kind of good practice. It stops us falling into rabbit holes. So here we have some folding gadgets and doesn't look like there's anything interesting to click on the page. Let's just click another one just to be sure. We can't rate this, although maybe I'm going to get myself a vintage neck defender for Halloween. And let's come to my accounts. And as usual, we probably have Vina and Peter. And here we have some nice functionality. Okay, so Vina HQ, da 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 da, country UK. So. Let's just submit this and take a look at the request. And while this is running, I'm just going to head to the terminal and just do search dash u just to make sure we haven't missed anything and run that in the background. So let's come over to Burp Suites and let's come over to HTTP history. And I've got mine set, so it's like newest things first. And if you're running a VM and the text is a little bit small for Burp Suite, I think it is for a lot of people, you can just come into user interface, display, and then we can change the font size. So I'm just gonna go up to 18 here. And then if we go into the message editor, we can change the font here, and maybe just change that to 20 and then we're good to go. All right, so this is the post request that we want and I'm just gonna tag it yellow. And if we make it a little bit bigger, we can scroll down and we can see here, this is the information that we're sending. And then this is the information that we get back. And this obviously is 
a flag where it's like, hey, we can see is admin is false. And this gives us some kind of insight into we should dig into this further or that's a, a property that we want to try and target with our attack. So I'm going to send this to Repeater. And to be honest, if this was a real application, I would probably first test this for mass assignments. So for example, we send this and we get OK and we can see that it's a node application powered by Express. And probably what I would try and do is something like uh, is admin and just overwrite this property and see whether we can send this. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work. It looks like this property maybe is already set in our object and we can't overwrite it, but we could do some further testing. So let's test true. It's interesting that a property that doesn't exist is then added to our object and reflected back to us. So there is some kind of merge going on here. And when you see this and you think, ah, maybe we have a old object or object that already exists and we want to merge user data into it, sometimes the place where prototype pollution can occur because often it occurs when we're merging objects together. And let's just see whether we can do something like overwrite the username, maybe the value. No, it looks like we can't overwrite properties that are already there. So next, what we want to do is maybe test for prototype pollution and doing this, trying to find server side prototype pollution without the source code and without being able to debug is often a bit of a pain, to be honest with you. Um, but there are some ways to do it. And if there's a great article by Gareth Hayes called um, Server Side Prototype Pollution Without the Denial of Service, if I recall, and there are a bunch of different techniques on there that we can use to try and help us identify to see whether we have prototype pollution. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a new objects like this with the keyword proto. And then inside here, we're just gonna do something like, I think it's its status. And let's do like 599. And maybe this needs to be a string, I can't remember. Oh my God, the autocomplete is killing me. Pet hate for everything in the world is uh, autocompletion. I think that every IDE and every tool should just ditch it completely. It's the most useless thing, it causes you more hassle than it solves. Anyway, so, so the point behind this attack is that potentially we can impact the object.prototype. So if we can set the status to 599, maybe we can either overwrite it or we can set it if there's no default. And then when the application tries to check for a status code, it's going to go, up the prototype chain, find it in object.prototype and then use that property rather than using the default property or no property if it hasn't been set. So let's try this and we get a 500 internal server error, which is not entirely surprising. So entity pass failed. Ah, you know what I've done is I've missed out a semicolon. So let's try this again and we get a 200 okay, finally. And what we're gonna do here now is if we have indeed changed the status for to 599 and polluted the object.prototype, we can try and just break our syntax to cause an error. And here you can see status code 599, status 599. So this is unusual. And then once again, what we can do is we can try and fix this. So if we come back, we could just say, hey, this is 500, or let's say 501, and then break this again. And you can see that it's 501. So here we've proved that we have prototype pollution, which is really, really powerful. And like I say, there are a bunch of techniques you can do things. You might be able to do things like change the number of spaces used in JSON or some other default values or some kind of configuration as well, depending on how the application set up and what it's using. So how do we cause an impact here? And I think the main thing is we can hypothesize that is admin maybe by default this is set for false if the property doesn't exist so if it checks for is admin true it's going to go up the chain and then check it in the object.prototype 
Now this does depend on the implementation. So obviously every application is different and depending on how this property is stored and managed and all sorts of other things and how it's checked for is going to basically uh, give us an impact or, or not give us an impact. So again, having access to source code is really, really helpful. But in this case, let's just try. And as is the case sometimes when we're working in a uh, closed box fashion, we're just gonna have to do trial and error. So is admin true? Let's send this here. And yeah, here we can see that the reflected property here is is admin true. So let's go to the front end and confirm what we've got. So if I just come to home, we can see that we have an admin panel pop up. We can come to the admin panel and as usual, bye bye Carlos user deleted successfully. So we're able to become the admin using prototype pollution. And I think what you really need to consider is that when we have prototype pollution, we can manipulate or target object properties. And so what we want to do is think about the application behavior, think about what we're able to do within the application, think about the structure, and then try and target those properties accordingly. And sometimes it's just gonna be guesswork and fuzzing because we might not know what the property names are. Other times, endpoints like this will leak property names from objects. We might also be able to see things in JSON web tokens, for example. We might be able to throw an error and then see some like stack trace, for example, and see some of the other properties that we might be able to target and things like this. So always think about how your application behaves. Always think about what's happening under the hood and that will help you be successful a little bit more often. And that's it for this lab and this video. So of course, if you like the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And we have a Discord channel as well with like 60K people who are all learning about cybersecurity. And so if you're interested, drop into the TCM Discord. And of course, we also have courses on the TCM Academy. Oh, and we live stream every single Wednesday. So if you wanna come in and ask questions or ask about prototype pollution or how to get into cybersecurity, or what the best resources are, then come join us on live stream every Wednesday, 12 ET. And depending on who's live streaming at the time, um, they'll answer your questions, but I'm there most weeks. So I'll be happy to answer your questions as well. Catch you next time.